Welcome all of you to Film Companion and a big congratulations on Delhi Crime. It's such a seamless uh, blend of documentary and fiction and, and I haven't seen all of it but what I saw was very, very disturbing and really sort of shook me up in, in many, many ways. Um, I want to start with you, Rishi. Uh, you know, this, this crime, this gang rape in 2012 in Delhi uh, sort of altered the fabric of the country. Uh, it sort of created global headlines. It altered the narrative around women in India. And you decided to go into this material from the point of view of the police. You know, you take a compassionate view of what these people, men and women, handled in those days and how they unraveled this case. Why did you think that was the best approach? Um, it wasn't a conscious decision on day one. It was an evolution of researching it and um, falling into the topic. It was a family friend of mine who was um, recently, recently retired from Delhi Police six years ago. And he put me onto it. He said, why don't you, he had seen my previous work and said, why don't you, you know, read some of the material if you're interested in making a film on this case. And I said, no way. I mean, this is, we're still in it. It, it was very <laughs> recent. It just happened. And n no part of me wanted to make anything about this. And I didn't think anyone should. It just let it be. And, you know, it needs to be dealt with in society rather than through this medium. Um, and then um, he said, just read it. Read the verdict, which is a, public document um, and a very long and drawn out one and so he says if you find there's something compelling there I'll, you know you meet some of the officers involved and then see how you feel so I read the document just as a person just fascinated to know have insights into you know the judge's thought process of which led to the first verdict and looking at all the details of the investigation which to me started to break down why this happened. I mean, where they went and what they did and who was involved. And it was, it was a starting point for me to at least understand this more. And then I said, I'd love to meet some of these officers named here. And I met them and I just talked to them over and over again over the course of eventually years. And finding their point of view on these things um, was so, it was so um, interesting to me because these are the people we task with solving these crimes, with maintaining law and order, with, with, with trying to get justice. But I don't think we really understand them, especially yeah. the ones who've been doing it for a long time. And as I especially meet the, the lady officers, and these, you know, when, when there's a gang rape registered, the IO has to be a lady officer. So these office sub-inspectors, inspectors, the DCP who I met, they've done so many of these cases, nothing like this, but so many of these ty types of cases. You know, I consider myself a pretty well-read person, but I don't think I've heard this perspective before. Mm -hmm. And why wouldn't we speak to you? You are the people at the front line. Yeah. So that, as that evolved, that understanding, that research over years, that's when I started to see this is, this is a way, I think, for, for me and maybe for, for a, bunch of, a lot of us to explore this incomprehensible event through people who are trying to comprehend it, and in fact must must do so very quickly, so that they can try and stop it. Mm. That became the way in. You know, but when it's something, when the material is so awful, uh, did you all struggle with how do you deal with it without alienating people? You know, like like that one response, uh, um, and and when I was watching it, I was like, oh my god, it's just it's so hard to handle. It's just so hard, even though it's not. Uh, it's not graphic. Uh, it's not graphic at, at all. all. Yeah, at yeah. all, you've you've handled it very carefully, and and but it's emotionally, uh, it was so overwhelming for me. You know, um, did you guys all struggle with uh, what's the line and how how do we do this correctly? <laughs> I mean, of course, when a project comes uh, like this comes up, you always have uh, you always think, yeah. is this uh, what we need to do with the conversation around this? But I think the material was from the when I read the first episode, um, it was very very clear that it was extremely well researched, and so I didn't doubt that um, uh, I, I knew, and I've, I've also known Rishi for a while, and I felt that um, I would totally trust him to deal with material like this, and of course, it was. Uh, he had done extensive interviews and uh, then come to the script. So I felt like I could trust this setup to be a part of a story like this. Shivali, for you, your DCP Vartika Chaturvedi, who's leading this investigation, how did you prep? Did you meet 
the person that this character is based on? Yes, I have had the honor to interact with her. And uh, she is incredible. She's an incredible woman. Uh, also, uh, she had, he'd laid the blueprint out for me. So all the details, there was so much in it. And then I had, uh, you know, uh, the DCP who I could ask questions to. I did meet her and, but then there is to say, what is the kind of research and work went into it? It's, it's really difficult to uh, give that answer. Really it is because it's, it's on so many levels. It's on so many levels. And when the crime happened, I wasn't with her to know exactly how she reacted at which moment. So I knew the grain of what the person is and I, I had to keep the grain, but then it was going to be my instinct, mm -hmm. and my impulse. Yeah, as a person. Yeah. As a person. Because it is a fictionalized, it's a fictionalized version. version. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, it's not uh, a documentary, right. it's not a... Yeah, so it, it was, I mean, there was a lot, and you know, it's not just, I mean, that's the emotional angle of it. But small things, like the first thing we would go on set, and it was like, what is the time? How many hours has she been awake? You know, everything went back to the 16th. We were actually, like, in your mind, you're actually working that way. Yeah, it's right. the fourth day since she's been this home. fourth day, you know? she's right. been awake. She's obviously exhausted. She's not slept. And then, but when was the last adrenaline uh, moment that came up? Yeah. What was the breakthrough? So that gives you, it's like a coffee uh, shot. So there was so, and that is just the technical part of yeah. it. Mm. But the emotional part of it, I mean, I can't even begin to explain. I don't know how. It just... Yeah. It just happened. There's no way of doing this unless you completely just give yourself that. And, and I guess you're also reacting to circumstances. Absolutely. Right? Mm. The circumstances are presented in front of them and they have to react. Mm. Is, that a, is there a, you know, plausibility to that reaction within right. the character that we're creating? Mm. Yeah. But for the two of you, you're of course both part of the crack team that her character puts together. Um, you know, when you, when you work on, on something like this for what I think, Rishi, I heard you say it was 60, it was Six. a 62-day shoot? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So when you work for that long, um, is there ever a point as artists, as actors, when, when, you, when it becomes too much of a burden, when you're working your way through material like this? Did you ever, like he said, he had the dark night of the soul. Did the three of you ever have it? Like physically, sometimes it's exhausting. It's exhausting, huh? लगातार काम करते रहना, लेकिन फिर इस पर्टिकुलर इसके लिए ऐसा लगा कि हाँ भूपेंद्र भी तो ऐसी कर रहा है, so it sometimes helps also. Right. You actually then in character. In character and जागे हुए बहुत लोगों से. Right. But for me भूपेंद्र के लिए मुझे ऐसा लगा कि मैं I live in Delhi and at that point of time also I was in Delhi and हर किसी की तरह मैं भी कहीं moved और अंदर से परेशान और एंगर था, लेकिन हमारी लिमिटेशन थी एस ए पर्सन भी क्या कर सकते हैं हम क्या नहीं कर सकते हैं, बिसाइड्स गोइंग टू प्रोटेस्ट्स एंड कैंडल मार्च्स एंड आई रोट सम पोइम्स, लेकिन इससे ज़्यादा कुछ कर नहीं सकते थे, लेकिन भूपेंद्र के लिए मुझे लगा कि उसके अंदर भी बहुत एंगर है बहुत कुछ है लेकिन उसकी भी लिमिटेशंस हैं ड्यूटी की मैं रहते हुए दायरे में सो दिस स्ट्रगल ऑफ अपना पर्सनल एंगर और पर्सनल चीज को अलग रख के ड्यूटी के बीच में कराना आई थिंक दैट वाज एज एन एक्टर चैलेंजिंग एंड नाइस टू एक्सप्लोर दैट एस्पेक्ट यू नो आई आल्सो फाउंड इट वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग हाउ इट ह्यूमनाइजेस द पुलिस you know, I mean, we see you with your family, we see you trying to buy medicines, you with a prospective uh, suitor, you know, it, like, I don't know, I guess because we're so used to seeing Simba and Singham, uh, oh. you know, <laughs> that's our uh, one version in our heads of what these hyper-masculine uh, cops mm -hmm. are like, right? Yes. And then you see them as normal people and you see the, just the fact that the, there's no electricity in that, in that you know, th these are things that, it's so easy to kind of dismiss, either sort of valorize them like Simba mm -hmm. and Singham or say they're all corrupt. Exactly. You yeah. know, but here you see them and you see the struggle. Rishi, was that intentional, that we need to see these people as people? That was the point, again, of that, that, that's when I started to awaken to the fact that this is what this could be. Because, again, we're talking about characters who are presented with a situation that 
when we were in that real environment as people, as citizens, we didn't know what to do. Our hands were tied, so it came out as civic anger. These are people in a position situation, and these characters are presented with a situation that they can actually do something about it directly. Yeah. So that's the one track. But as I would do the research and sit with them and observe, even just observing, I realize, oh my God, the challenges these people face on a day-to-day -day basis, I don't think people know about this. So when we say, you know, why aren't you keeping the peace? Why are these things happening? They can give us a laundry list right. <laughs> of that day, right. that day, what impeded them getting to the crime scene, yeah. you know? And yeah. they're all logical things that the traffic was bad and I didn't have a car. Yeah. Mm. Huh? Yeah. You know, and, and so, I, I mean, forget about the world, uh, Indians, the world, no, I don't think anyone knows this, that this would be impediments yeah. in their life. And then take that to the next stage of, well, what do you, how do you feel about these things? And this is, oh, well, it's one thing to deal with, with the gang rapes. It's another thing, my daughter wants to leave the country, and I don't know if she'll ever come back. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, my God, that's a, that's a mother's worry. You have that on top of, on top of these things you deal with. So th that, again, that kind of started to form the basis of my motivation to want to do these and the inspiration to, to you know, create these characters. Yeah. So, Shafali, I've always wanted to ask you this. Every time I see you, whether it's in a short film like Juice or in Dil Dharakne, though I still remember you eating that cake uh, against that wall. You know, these scenes are etched in my head. Um, or, or in, in Delhi Crime. Um, I always say, why doesn't she work more? Why don't you work more? Because nobody gives me work. <laughs> really? Uh, the kind of work I want to do... You have to like the scripts. It come, yeah, it comes rarely. And earlier it used to bother me, but... Uh, I don't care if I have very few films on my resume, but the ones I have are the kind of projects I'm very proud of. And I love this way too much to just go to work. Mm. So I'd rather just wait for something special. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got, I got like, very lucky with that attitude. Yeah, <laughs> very lucky. It's just uh, really because you're so good. You're all so good, mm -hmm. and and so I also want to talk a little about the fact that streaming platforms has given us all the opportunity to see stories like this. But mm -hmm. you, as artists, to explore something like this in such depth and in such complexity. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you all come from the world of film. Uh, uh, how has how has the fact of a Netflix uh, sort of altered your life as artists? I know you've done several. Hmm. We've seen you in, in so many now and it's so wonderful to see so much of you. I mean, in the truth, the OTT platforms, Netflix, my selection day, I think that as an actor, aap, uh, this format gives you, uh, act, as an actor and a, as a writer also, hmm. to explore the subplots and all the details. The film is only the protagonist ki hi, सुख right. दुख पे रह जाती है बात hmm. वो एक हीरो नहीं होता है हां इसमें अब जो yeah. जो हीरो नहीं है hmm. प्रोटैगोनिस्ट नहीं है उसके yeah. भी सुख दुख उसके सब है एज एन ऑडियंस मुझे लगता है कि मैं अगर हीरो से आइडेंटिफाई नहीं कर पा रहा तो मैं किसी और से कर पा रहा हूं तो देयर आर लॉट ऑफ कैरेक्टर्स जिनसे मैं आइडेंटिफाई कर पाता हूं तो एज एन एक्टर ऑडियंस मुझे लगता है दिस इज रियली मतलब एक्साइटिंग एंड गुड फॉर या एंड इट्स आल्सो ट्रेनिंग आई मीन इट I don't know who who is training who, but at the same time, the audience, there was a point, as you know, expert on independent films, especially coming out of this country, audiences are, are losing their tolerance for independent films, yeah. just sitting down going to the cinema yeah. for 90 minutes or an hour. But somehow for seven hours, they can do it right. at home. <laughs> so it's like, at home. At this home. This is the key they thing. They can do it at home. And at their own uh, convenience. Yeah. yeah. Right. But, but they're also more likely to sit down for seven hours in a row. I know. I know, then, I know. Then go to the I cinema have for 90 minutes. <laughs> yeah. So this is, a, this is a, it's very strange for a creator to say that we were being pushed as independent filmmakers to shorten your films. Right. Because the tension span is reducing. <laughs> and all of a sudden this comes along and it's like, no, 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 no make, forget about 80 minutes, make it seven hours. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, and it's not arbitrary. This right. story warranted it. Yeah. But as a result, I think people, we can think in a different way again. Yeah.
Yeah. And at least there's now room for all those women characters who get edited out when there are time constraints. <laughs> no, so, but yeah. isn't it a great time for women? Yes. I mean, look at the complexity of the women characters you mm. play. Look at the complexity of something like Made in Heaven where, you know, the woman is at the center of it and, and the other protagonist is a gay man. It's wonderful. Yeah. I mean, where were we going to see these people? Yeah. Yeah. You know? And it's not, just because, it's not just about the OTP platforms. Like, in comparison, there are eight hours of a film, yeah. and then there is a 15 minute. Yeah. There's the short film. A short yeah. film. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. But I think what has changed is that it's opening up to more stories which are not restricted to the norms of what cinema, particularly Hindi cinema, used to be about. There was a hero and there was a heroine. Now it's not about the hero and the heroine, it's about characters. Yeah. They're real stories, mm -hmm. and everyone's equally important, which yeah. is which is great. Yeah. Do you think, do you think ki, because now audiences are watching material like this, um, are we going to see more changes in Hindi cinema coming sooner? It is already changing. I think there's been a lot of, you know, th there are variations. You can see that. Uh, but do you think this will hasten the process of this paradigm of hero, heroine going away? I don't think uh, what has been carried down for years is going to change. Too soon. Not just too soon. I don't think it's ever going to die out. Mm -hmm. And why not? There are people who want to see a symbol. Sure. Mm -hmm. You know, they yeah. want to see the song, the dance, full fight full on. Huh. Why not? Huh. Uh, but earlier there was, you know, this niche of art films or whatever. Now it's almost like we call it the parallel cinema. Yeah. yeah. It's not just, so, uh, and which is great. I don't think it's going to be wiped out. It can't and it shouldn't. Right. Because I'm not expecting everyone to understand probably Jews. I mean, I'm not saying uh, everyone could identify with it, but you know... It's the, a different style. Of story. Yeah, it's a different yeah. style. And yeah. some people just really want to go there for entertainment. I mean, somebody who's working sure. all week, traveling from Virar to Churchgate, yeah. he gets one Sunday off, he wants to spend his money. What is he going to go and see? Total somebody amount. else's issues. No, of course. Mm. Absolutely. And, and, and all respect and to that. Fair enough. I, I mean, Absolutely. entertainment has a great place. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 But there is, it's an equal place for matter. Did she tell me, coming back to Delhi Crime, about the visual style? How mm -hmm. did you find um, that this is, again, the way to do it in terms of just visuals? You know, the, the camera right behind characters. We're literally walking in and, mm -hmm. and moving through spaces as their characters are mm -hmm. moving through spaces. How did you arrive at that? I mean, it helps to have the, the DOP that we had, our cinematographer, Johan uh, Eid. He um, is a genius. And when we first started talking about this, um, my vision for it, which happened to match his vision for it, uh, was that we are, we are presenting um, scenes and events and circumstances and ideas which we don't want to judge. We don't want to judge it. We want to present it for you to form your opinion. Um, and therefore, we have to be a um, observer in the room, literally. So a lot of the scenes were staged entirely as scenes without a camera. And then we would figure out where the camera is going to go. But the, per the camera is a person. So it's not that the camera will just go there for that shot. And then when these guys come sit here, we go, there. it wasn't that. No, the camera is a person because it was attached to Johan's shoulder. Every single shot in all seven episodes is on his shoulder. Really? Every shot. And so, and so he would... So he's just walking behind He's them. walking, and not necessarily just walking behind. Sometimes he's in front. Right. Sometimes he's beside. Right. But sometimes if it's pe four of us sitting... But the camera's literally a person. It's a person. Yeah. And yeah. so it's, he, this would be Johan if the four char if we're the four characters. And then if we get up, he gets up and then walks with them. And then he might go somewhere else because he's motivated by a different character. But... You know, that's the, it is a point of view. Right. If it's everyone sitting, then, and we have to do the traditional, you know, sh cuts because it's a long conversation scene, it's still going to be from that point of view. He never got up from the chair, even though we covered and covered and covered. It wasn't covering from here and this and then this side. No, he sat in one spot. So we would light the space. We would let the actors figure out what the scene was and we would do it together. <clears throat> but it was a, it was a non-judgmental non way of becoming a bystander. Hmm. Wow, that's fascinating. 
and okay. it's lovely for actors. How I so? was shooting for something else simultaneously and I went to that set and said, you mean you're going to take five shots from different <laughs> angles? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was having such a fun time doing this one day. Yeah. What's the need for this? Just see yeah, someone. It, it allowed us to do 15 pages a day sometimes, mm -hmm. which is really? three, three to four times faster than a film. But I don't think, it, nobody will feel it. In fact, it adds to the energy of it. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Right. You know, um, Rishi also said that the that it was very important that the series address um, what contributed to the crime. You know, the the caste, the class, the economic situation mm -hmm. that led up to this. Uh, why do you all think that that was important? That viewers need to look and understand the causes. Uh, there was a lot of anger, a lot of public anger, and when you have that much anger concentrated with that many people, it it can move the world, and sometimes in the wrong direction, yeah. to violence. People died. Um, and so for me, to if, you can't help but feel it. It's there. So if it's going to be channeled, I think the best way to do that is to understand as much as you can about it, and then figure out a way to channel all that emotional energy you have. <laughs> so uh, the initial reaction, I think, was all kinds of confusion and sorrow and horror and anger, and then the anger got channeled. But let's first just take a sec second, look at all the issues involved, or at least as many as we can. And then, if you're still feeling anger, let's channel that into something that will make things better. That really will. And if you still want to protest, fine. But if there's another way that you can contribute with the skill set you have, with the, the things you love doing, or you, the things you feel you're good at, then that's a different way to make things better. But just take a step back for a moment and look at the, the big picture before you start, you know, overturning the table. It really humanized the police for me. And uh, as Neeti, I just felt suddenly uh, uh, safe in a place which I had accessed so many years back. I had lived in Delhi as a college student and I had never really thought of it like that. But while shooting for this, because the police suddenly became so humanized for me, that I, I started to feel like this was a safe space. You know? Really? Yeah. <laughs> so, because, I mean, I had hung out with... Uh, I'd spent some time with IPS officers who were in training, and they do different things. They don't, they're not in one place at one time, so they're possibly understanding the working of one police station on one day, of another one on another day, yeah. uh, understanding how the PCR vans work in the city on one day. So I did some of that, and they were all very idealistic and wanting to do their work well, and very sincere officers. So, so it gives you faith. Yeah, it gives, gave me a lot of faith, yeah. yes. Well, definitely, watching it, uh, and I'm going to brave be brave and finish it. <laughs> Though I know that you've said that it does lead to catharsis, so it's not, um, you know, you end it on hope. It's, it's worth it, yes. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely, this was very exciting and good luck, good luck. I, I, I want, I'm curious to see the response in 190 countries. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's because it's, it's such a, um, it's a story that resonates. You know, I, I, I don't think it's a local yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think, uh, uh, and, and especially as a woman, I have to say, it was just so moving. And, and thank you. Thank you I to all of you. Thank you. you. <laughs> if you like this video, please subscribe to Film Companion.